This is a brief look at the feature-length first episode of John Michael Godier's Event Horizon. Premiering September 20th with our first guest, theoretical physicist Dr. Avi Loeb, the Frank B. Bow Jr. Professor of Science at Harvard University. And now, here's John with Dr. Loeb. Now, the low-mass red dwarf type stars that live so long, these are not great candidates for developing life of their own because early on they have a tendency, or at least some of them have a tendency to be uh, violent. That's right. But they do make, as far as human colonization and escaping the sun, they do make attractive targets there. What is the chances of some sort of simple life developing on a planet around a red dwarf and also going with that what are the possibilities of like ice shell moons like Europa possibly being abodes of life around red dwarfs well these are excellent questions um, so the first uh, question that I wrote a few papers about is um, if, if these Loma stars outlive the Sun uh, why don't we find ourselves next to one of them. And since they are the most abundant stars, why don't we find us ourselves next to one of them in the future? Uh, that's the most likely place to be in. Uh, why do we find ourselves next to the sun at the present time? And it may well be that uh, the environments next to them are um, not so hospitable for life. So one aspect is indeed that they flare a lot. And in fact, Proxima Centauri had a huge flare that would have killed most forms of life on Earth if we were exposed to it. Um, and the second aspect is that the habitable zone near a low mass star, because such a star is so faint, the habitable zone is closer in. Proxima B, the planet next to Proxima Centauri, is 20 times closer to the star than we are from the sun. And as a result, it's susceptible to a very strong pressure from the wind coming from the star. And, and that wind can, in principle, strip the atmosphere of the planet uh, because it's so powerful. Uh, and so uh, if there is no atmosphere, uh, there is no life because uh, life as we know it requires liquid water. And if you take water ice and you just warm it in vacuum, it turns into gas. It doesn't turn into liquid. You need an external pressure to make it a liquid. Uh, and the external pressure is provided by an atmosphere. Uh, and so you need a planet that can hold on to its atmosphere such that uh, when it's at the right distance from the star, the water ice will turn into liquid. Um, we have a warning sign that uh, not all planets can retain their atmospheres. And the warning sign is next door uh, when we look at Mars. Uh, Mars lost its atmosphere, and we don't see any form of life crawling on its surface right now. There might have been an atmosphere with uh, liquid water on its surface early on. Uh, and that's what the, the kind of evidence uh, we're seeking. Uh, but the lack of atmosphere prevents liquid water from existing right now on the surface of Mars. Um, and so um, it, it may well be that um, those environments near dwarf stars uh, do not allow planets with an atmosphere um, on which life can develop as uh, comfort comfortably as uh, on Earth because of the storms and the wind of those, of those stars. And that would explain why uh, the first example, ourself, uh, that we find uh, is uh, next to a star like the sun that is not so typical but relatively quiet uh, even though it's uh, short-lived and not a typical star. Turn on notifications. We will be announcing other guests before launch. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at JMG Event Horizon.